Hi, this is Mark Gaylor, Adobe Photoshop Ambassador for the Asia Pacific region here. And we're going to discuss or uh, feature my top 20 all time favorite uh, tips and techniques for when working in Photoshop CC. In top tip number 16, I'm going to create a time lapse movie uh, in Photoshop. Now, you don't need any special cameras uh, to create um, the stills in order to create a time lapse movie. Pretty much anything from an iPhone to a sophisticated uh, interchangeable lens camera will do the job. The important thing is uh, you put the camera on a tripod and just fire off um, shots over an interval uh, in between each shot. Okay, so rather than having one shot of this scene, I'm going to create a movie of the boats uh, moving through the estuary here uh, which is going to be a little bit more dramatic than just one still. Now how would we do this inside of Photoshop? Uh, we're going to go to the file uh, open command and we're going to navigate to a folder that contains the still images that I've captured. Now these were captured in Port Douglas okay and uh, just by that barrier reef there and I'm going to select the top image and only one image. You can see that there's a number of images here they're all in numerical se sequence as numbered by the camera. Now we're not getting the option that I'm looking for in the bottom of the dialog and that's because I need to in this uh, window this uh, operating system window I'm gonna need to click on that options there now I'm getting the um, uh, image sequence checkbox that I'm looking for okay so with the first image selected image sequence selected we're now ready to select open don't try and open all of the hundreds of images into Photoshop at the same time okay because when you run out of RAM you will crash the software most probably so just the first image image sequence and open it will then ask me for the frames per second okay so typically um, you might choose 24 or 25 frames per second for smooth continuing motion there so I'll select uh, 25 and select OK now in my timeline you'll see that all of those images are resourced in the layers panel you'll see if I just zoom in you'll see that this is a movie icon now be very careful that um, uh, when we save the master working file it'll be a Photoshop document or PSD and it will uh, look to the original location where we loaded these still images from. So if you move that folder of still images um, um, Photoshop will put a question mark here saying I've lost where the originals are please remind me uh, so I need to relink to them. So it's probably worth creating a project folder uh, for this exercise. Uh, let's just hit the play button. Now the first time that uh, Photoshop plays back this sequence it won't play at 25 frames per second because it builds up what is said to be a cache. Well my very fast computer is not far off. Okay it's managed that very quite quickly there uh, but now the second time I play it will play back in real time. So let's just play that one more time so we can see that unfold and in come the jet skis and there's a nice little time-lapse sequence there. Uh, all we need to do really uh, from that point in time is uh, just click on the little icon at the bottom of the timeline to render the video and you can choose uh, whether you want to render it out at 720 or 1080 um, that's really up to you and give that uh, movie a name there are a couple more options and given that that really didn't take long I do have the option of adding a soundtrack there so I can just click on the audio track I can go to my music library I've got some royalty free music I can use here and um, let's go quasi motion and click open now this um, audio file is a lot longer than my um, short very short time lapse clip so I'm just going to uh, roll down to the mini mountains and I'm going to back that movie uh, sorry the uh, audio clip right back up it's got a little bit of a magnetic uh, touch so it'll snap in to the end of my movie file there so this will now, now play back we didn't quite manage that uh, let's just uh, snap that out okay now it's the right length and now this will play back to uh, music and um, 
so I've got the music uh, muted there but uh, we can see that that will actually export now with a music track uh, anything else we can do to make our um, time lapse a little bit fancier well there's a couple of things actually um, one of the things we can do is we can convert this into smart objects. Uh, now you know that I'm a big fan of smart objects and we've covered this in a couple of the previous top tips. Okay, now if we convert this into a smart object, we get to have our timeline in purple instead of blue. Uh, that's not the special feature <laughs> I hasten to add, um, but it's just an indication that this timeline now is linked to a, a smart object. Uh, if I click on this little arrow now, uh, we do have the option to apply motion control that we formerly wouldn't have had. And I can pan and zoom or um, uh, I'll choose, yeah, I'll choose a pan and zoom. Now we can choose the uh, direction of the pan and to zoom in or zoom out. And uh, this will do all of the work for us. We could do this manually, but you need to know a little bit about timelines to do that. Uh, but this is an automated feature. Um, so now when we export this, and as you can see, um, we're zooming in as this movie will play. Now if I play this back, it will have to recache each of these frames. So we'll have to be patient the first time it works through. It's working a little bit slower now. Uh, we're down to 12 frames per second as it's building those frames. Uh, and it's a little bit jumpy but at 25 frames per second it'll play back smoothly and so we get that pan and zoom going in on that um, time-lapse movie. Okay so uh, there's Photoshop uh, working very quickly with uh, creating time-lapse movie from our stills.